Yeah, um, I'm Debola. I'm an artist, writer, uh, poet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I moved to Lagos like six years ago, about six years ago, right after you know, uni. So I, I did my NYC in Lagos. I was actually professed to Katsina, and then I already played to Lagos. Um, I basically moved to Lagos to get a job. I started out as a writer. Well, I've always been an artist, like, since I was a child. I would just, like, I couldn't stand being bored. When they left the hour, like, you know, go to school, I was left alone at home. And I didn't want to get bored, so I started to draw, just, like, sketch cartoon characters. Um, I think it was Ben 10, like, the first thing I decided <laughs> to, like, focus on. I decided to draw all the aliens in Ben 10. That was, like, my first art project, as it were. So, yeah, since then, this, this is probably, like, maybe GS2, GS1. Since then, I've had a sketch pad, and I always sketch. So I'm always, like, sketching. People say it's very small. It's, like, the biggest city in Nigeria, in Africa, even, I think. But it's quite small. Like, the social circles are small. Everybody knows everybody. You either go to the same school or go to the same church with everybody. So, yeah, it was it, it, it was fun. I love being in Ibadan. It's peaceful. You know, you're not in traffic for as long. You can <laughs> go to, like, three clubs in one night. Yeah. So... What was um what was your parents um what was their reaction from a young age when you started drawing and you know right. getting into the arts? Were they supportive? Were they strict? What, what was that like for you? I think they tried to be supportive, um, but they didn't exactly encourage it. Um, my mom my mom would buy me like um you know watercolors and all of this stuff, but she wouldn't exactly like look at it as like something you could do for like a living you know like you still have to go to school as long as your grades are fine you know basically like it's fine with you doing whatever hobbies you like but um as far as me taking it serious as like a you know she just thought i was like wasting my time really she just thought i was old he likes to paint and she didn't mind me painting as long as my grades are fine you know what, what did you study in uni political science political science so um yeah. Would you say some of your art is inspired by, I mean, are you interested in political science or did you just do it for, for, um, uh, parents? Actually, I just did, I did whatever course seemed like I would be able to graduate conveniently without too much stress. And I get my government results were quite good in school, in secondary school. So it seemed like a logical direction to go in. Um, but my drawings are not particularly inspired by politics, even though I don't think you can ignore um, politics, especially like with the knowledge that I have from uni. You can't, everything seems kind of political to me in a way. I don't know if it's because I studied political science, but um, if I had to say what influences my drawings, it would be music more than anything else. Definitely music. This one, which I really love. Yeah, uh, no, this was my inspired by music. Interesting. <laughs> Sometimes I might hear like a, a phrase in like a song and think, or like if I could depict that in like art, so you could see what that person was saying, it would be really sick. Or just like hearing stuff and you think, oh, like this visually, you know, some people know how to like write, you know, lyrics in a way that you can literally visualize it. And so I try to like visualize it. Sometimes it might just be the mood of the song. Like it could be like a really psychedelic, like jazz, like a really psychedelic like rock song. And I'm thinking, oh, I need to make like something that captures this mood, you know, basically. Growing up watching cartoons or like Cartoon Network, you know, Nickelodeon, what what does that mean to you when you, you know, see the images from that generation? I still watch cartoons. I haven't stopped. I don't think I would ever stop. Um, what does it mean to me? I guess, like, for me, it inspired me. So, for me, like, watching cartoons as a child and realizing that, like, it's adults that make them, I, I kind of, like, learned really early not to feel embarrassed about me still liking cartoons well into my adulthood because I felt like, well, the person making it is not a child. So, um, so, like, Obviously, there's no, like, if the person making it in a child, then the person making it knows, you know, adult stuff, and it can obviously include adult things in the cartoon they choose to. And I just think it's, like, a very comforting and soothing way of communicating or, you know, expressing stuff. Like, I watch, like, this cartoon called Adventure Time, and it's just so mm. awesome. Like, um, 
every kind of like emotion that you could think of experiencing friendship heartbreak everything it's all in like a very soothing like way of like expressing stuff like imagine if you were watching like the titanic like all of those like tear jacking like emotions or whatever like you know whatever grand cinematic thing is happening it could happen in cartoons and as a child you could watch this and you know you know basically like understand these emotions that are supposed to be like mature emotions but you're still like a child like i just think it's like mind-blowing i don't know i just i love cartoons man like it's very i think it's a very soothing way to communicate Mm. Express what you're saying, man. The stuff you do is mainly digital, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, I guess like so for me, pencil was messy or is messy, and I'm never really like taking art too seriously. Like, I don't take anything to the fair. So I've never really taken art too seriously, and I don't think like to paint, you would need to like. You know, have prep. Um, when you make a mistake, you have to start over. Like I just feel like physical painting is way more messy, and digital is like you could be drawing for a month, it would not age. You would, you know, you could save, come back a year later, and it would still be the exact way. I just, it's convenient. That's how I say. Digital art is way more. Con- I think it's the most convenient way to, you know, create art in our day and time. What gave you the idea for the metamorphosis painting? For metamorphosis? Oh yeah, I was listening to Claire Bercati, big fan. I was, I mean, yeah, big fan of Claire Bercati. I was listening to that project from over and over and over and over. And it just, it was very inspiring. I felt like, you know, I felt, especially the track metamorphosis, it's all very, you can do whatever you want to do. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. You have to do that, nigga. And I wanted to like embody that and actually, you know, you know, express that I can actually do whatever I want to do. I think it was because of the pandemic. I felt like I was in this motion, doing the same thing over and over and over. And you know, you just wake up, walk, wake up, open your laptop, close your laptop, wake up, open your laptop, then close your laptop again. So yeah, basically I was like, I felt like I was getting sent over and over and over and I needed to change desperately. So I decided to dye my hair. And that just kind of tied into the whole concept of metamorphosis, basically changing how you To me, like your your stuff is very like graphic novel y. Do you do you do you read graphic novels? Or are you inspired by them? Yeah, I love graphic novels. Well, comics, I love comics. But I guess same thing on graphic novels really. Um I've always been like a fan of the Cartoon Network Arnold. I don't know if you guys read those, but as a child, I grew up as like a fan that would like save up all this money to buy Arnold and comics as well. I actually just started reading comics again this year or maybe last year, recently. Mm. I love comics. I love comics. So I do have... they do they influence your art? Would you say? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would definitely say. I I used to like um learn how to make facial like draw facial expressions by looking at comics basically. That's how I learned how to um create facial expressions. And then I started a comic um column for Native when I was still working there. I started a column for them where I was basically making like a comic every week. But my Instagram is very influenced by comics. Like I try to make. I try, you know, because you have slides now, you can put more than one picture. I try to like tell like a comic joke with each post I make, so you can see like more than one post. So like it's supposed to be like a story, like if you are reading a comic, basically. So yeah, that influences. Well, wow, definitely, I have a lot of comic comic book influences. That's really creative. That's really creative, man. Like using the swiping thing as a yeah. way to kind of even you know tell a story through the art so it kind of adds another dimension to the art like you're not only showing the art but now there's a whole story in comic book form to create my art i use something called krita krita k-r-i-t-a it's not very popular in fact it might get popular eventually so i I decided to learn that because because at the time it was like under level a while ago maybe like maybe like seven eight years ago now I decided to learn that because instead of Photoshop, because 
it also allowed me to be able to animate within the same app. Digital art is not appreciated in Nigeria enough. Yeah, is like it outside that... outside Nigeria? Interestingly, outside Nigeria, I've had exhibitions. Okay. I, I had one in Canada, really still last year, probably last year, if I remember correctly. Oh, and wow. like, I, I don't think I've ever, I've never had an exhibition of like my digital illustration in Nigeria. Do you get what I mean? Like, no one has ever been like, oh yeah, like I like your artwork, let me display it. The most I've had is someone saying, oh, I like your sketches, display your sketches. But that, they, would, they don't mind doing that, even though it's sometimes it's like the same thing. Like, I, I digitally paint my sketches and I've had people tell me that they want to display my sketches, but never my digital illustration. Do you, you get what I mean? Yeah, so like I don't I don't think people appreciate digital illustration. So is is there a community then of digital artists in Nigeria, like or let's just say in Lagos, let's just focus on Lagos. Is there like at least are there like five, six, seven of you who are friends, who work together, who sort of encourage one another? Does does that exist? I know I know there are definitely digital illustrators in Lagos who are doing well who make like artwork that inspires me consistently and I don't know if we are not friends I mean they might know my handle and I might know their handle but we don't hang out they might hang out with each other I don't really know them so I, say, like, I, don't, I don't know but um but yeah we know we know each other at first you know seeing each other sharing work on social media I think the actual art community is more um is more physical like they have events they host parties and stuff like that but with digital art, you wouldn't really get that. Other than that, who are three people that you would love to collaborate with? Um, I, I love Drake. Like Drake is like my favorite artist in the world. Everything he says is like gold for me. So if I can work with Drake, that would be a dream come true. Um, yeah, I think. Well, and then maybe an artist. I guess, honestly, like a lot of artists inspire me. If I had to pick, I would say Stanley, there's a curse. I mean, comic. I love the comic, and I, I, I feel like he tells me, really really. and he's also a writer, so that's like something that I can easily we can bond over, and if we can work together. I mean, it's late now, so we can't exactly. It's all it's only stuff I can dream about at this point. But yeah, he definitely inspired me. Man. But yeah, so who who are you listening to at the moment? Just a couple artists. Just let us know before we sign off. Uh, always listening to um, Audrey. Um, um, Santi. Those shouldn't even count, I think. I think you should put that on the side. Um, Run Town, Mean. Um, What's your favorite um, agency song? No More PDA? Uh, nah, it's the one with um, it's Wicked Sexy. That's my favorite. Wicked Sexy. Beautiful. Yeah. And your favorite Santi song? Oh, that's tough. That is tough. I think I prefer the older Santi though. The one, the one with the video, the one that said when uh, Gangster Fair, that's still my favorite Santi song. Because I used to kill that, right? Like, I, yeah. I think, I think it's like, I, I love that dynamic of like having to ask this, that like, the song, you, you cannot pick a favorite because like, you just, like, they both, they both killed it. And I love that. I love, because I think that created the whole, all this thing. But after that song, we were just like, okay, who are these two guys? And if they can, make like a song go viral or so just give me the sound really good then everybody would like challenge to up their game and I think from that point on everyone knew they got really really good like they set the bar really high and it's, I think yeah that's the fair let me just stop stick right in yeah, like, so okay. if you like the old Santi do you like the old Odunsi like the Odunsi from Time of Our Lives that project that's I my prefer the new <laughs> I prefer the new Odyssey, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the new Odyssey has a more like hip hop feel, which I think fits them. You know, you're an sure. incredible artist, and bro, you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of yourself. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank you. Make a round of applause for Big up yourself. Big up yourself, Debola. Thank you. Alter Daily, the alternative network.